Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma. Today's video is part three of the holiday Santa Afghan. This is a four part series where we're baking our Santa Afghan. In this video, we're going to finish the Santa applique and we're going to join our blocks. So let's jump right in and let's get started. So now it's time to do the finishing touches on our Santa applique. We need to make his little mouth. We need to crochet his mustache and we're going to make his nose and then we're going to attach the safety eyes. So first I'm going to start with the mouth. So you're going to need your red. So grab your red yarn, grab your hook and let's get these pieces started. I already attached my red to my hook with a double knot and you can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn to your hook. For the mouth, we're going to chain two, yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook and that creates your first chain. The loop on your hook does not count as a chain. So that's one and two. Now we're going to work five single crochet into that second chain from hook. You're going to skip the first chain, insert into the second chain, and work five single crochet. There's one. Insert back into that same stitch. Work your second single crochet. And sometimes it really helps to have fingernails when you're starting a little project like this to be able to hold on to it. Insert back into that same stitch work your third single crochet. Insert back into that same stitch, work your fourth single crochet. Insert back into that same stitch and work your fifth single crochet. So when you look at your work, you can see how it looks like a half circle. You have this curve on the bottom and that's the bottom of his mouth. So that's all you have to do for the mouth. So now I'm just going to fasten off and when you fasten off, leave a little bit longer length so you can sew this onto your Santa applique. So just remember, sometimes it's better to have a longer length than too short of a length. So I'm just going to fasten off, and when I fasten off, I chain two, and then I pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, and pull down. So after I make the mouth, I'm just going to take my yarn needle. It's so much easier to do this as you go with your little pieces. So we fastened off on the right hand side. So this is the right side of the mouth. So I'm just going to flip this over. I'm going to take my yarn needle. And again, it really helps if you have a little bit longer length. And I'm just going to run this right through the back of these stitches on the back of my work. Now I just pulled it through two stitches. So I want to take it through two more stitches. And then I always like to bring it back. I just skip one strand of yarn just so it doesn't come back through the way I pulled it. And then I just run it back through a couple more stitches and then pull it out. And then I'm just going to trim this little end off here. And then this piece of yarn on the right hand side, I'm going to use to stitch this to my Santa applique. So now we have one mouth made. Now you need to make eight more mouths so you have a mouth for each block. So go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to grab my white and I'll be back and we'll start making the mustaches. So now I'm going to begin the mustache. I already have my white attached to my hook and again you can use whichever method you prefer. Now I kept a little bit longer length when I started because I want to be able to weave this in back and forth through those stitches on the wrong side. So we're going to begin and we're going to chain 14. You're going to yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook and that creates your first chain. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
and 14. So for the mustache, we're going to work across the top of our chain, and then we're going to come around and work around the bottom of our chain. So let's go ahead and start. There's only one round to the mustache. We're going to slip stitch into the second chain from hook. We're going to skip the first chain, insert into the second chain, yarn over, pull through that chain, and pull through the loop on your hook. That's how you do a slip stitch. We're going to single crochet into the next chain. We're going to half double crochet into the next chain. So yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over, and pull through. You have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's how you do a half double crochet. Now we're going to work three double crochet into this next chain. So to make a double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert into that next chain, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops. That's how you make a double crochet. We need to do two more double crochet into that same stitch, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, work a double crochet. Double crochet back into that same stitch. So when you look at your work, you're going to have three double crochet into that same stitch. Now we're going to work a half double crochet into the next stitch, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a half double crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch, and now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Insert into that next chain, yarn over, pull through the chain, and pull through the loop on your hook. So we have the top half of the mustache made. So now we're just going to repeat this section and we're just doing it in reverse. You're going to single crochet into the next chain, half double crochet into the next chain, three double crochet into the next chain. There's one. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, work your second double crochet, and then double crochet back into that same chain for a total of three double crochet. Half double crochet into the next chain, single crochet into the next chain, and we're going to slip stitch into the last chain. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through that chain, and pull through the loop on your hook. So the top of our mustache is made. So now we're going to chain one, and this forms our corner to go around to the other side. Now, if you wish, you can hold this yarn right up against your work and crochet over it, and that will weave in your ends. So we're going to begin, and we're going to slip stitch into this first chain. So right into the first chain, insert your hook, and I'm going to crochet over my end. I'm going to slip stitch, yarn over, pull through that chain, and pull through the loop on your hook. Into the next chain, you're going to work a single crochet. And if you're not sure, look for the single crochet above because we're matching stitches. Here's your single crochet. We're going right into the base of that single crochet into that chain and work a single crochet. Half double crochet into the next chain. Now we're going to work three double crochet into that next chain. One, two, and three. And you'll notice that it's right in the base of the three double crochet below. You're going into that same space half double crochet into the next chain, and again, if you're not sure, find that half double crochet, follow it down, work a half 
double crochet single crochet into the next chain slip stitch into the next chain single crochet into the next chain half double crochet into the next chain now we're going to work three double crochet into the next chain and it should be right at the base of the three double crochet below so yarn over insert into the next chain work three double crochet one two, and three. Half double crochet into the next chain, single crochet into the next chain. We're going to slip stitch into this next chain. We're going to chain one to form the corner and then you're going to come over where you see your first teardrop, insert under those top two loops, and we're going to slip stitch our mustache together. So now fasten off, but leave a little bit longer length because you need to sew right through the center of your mustache and sew that on. So leave at least about a 12 to 15 inch length just to give you plenty of yarn to weave that in. So I'm just going to fasten off. And then because I crocheted over my end, I'm just going to fasten this off on the back. And if you didn't crochet over your end, you can just weave that through in and out, back and forth across the back of your work. But this is what our little mustache is gonna look like. So now all you have to do is make eight more of your mustaches so you have a total of nine. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my darker pink, that taffy color, and we're going to go ahead and make his little nose. I already have my taffy colored yarn attached to my hook, and again, use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn. We're going to begin with a chain two, one, and two. Now we're ready to begin round one of our nose. We're going to skip the first chain. You're going to insert into the second chain from hook and work four single crochet. There's one. Insert back into that same chain. Work your second single crochet. Insert back into that same chain. Work your third single crochet. Insert back into that same chain and work your fourth single crochet. Now if you're new to crocheting and you have trouble when you're working in the round knowing where the next beginning stitch is, then you should use a stitch marker. So we're not joining for this round, so I'm just going to pull my hook up and make a loop and then I'm going to grab a stitch marker. I'm just using a piece of yarn. So you can just count back one, two, three, four, and just insert your yarn into that fourth single crochet stitch. So then just insert your hook back into your loop and tighten that up and then you can see exactly where your first stitch of round two is going to go. So now we're ready to begin round two. Round two, we're going to be working two single crochet in each of the four stitches of round one. So let's go ahead and begin. You're going to insert under the top two loops of that first single crochet stitch. So make sure you're getting under both of those top two loops. Work two single crochet. One, insert back into that same stitch, work your second single crochet. Now you want to move your stitch marker up, so pull your hook up. Now if you're using a stitch marker, you can just go ahead and stick that in the first stitch. I'm using a piece of yarn, so I'm just going to take my hook out 
and I'm just going to move that stitch marker up to the very first stitch that we made of round two. So I'm just going to grab my yarn and then just pull it up through that stitch so you know where the first stitch goes on round three. So I'm going to insert my hook, tighten up again, and now we're going to work two single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Insert into the next stitch under the top two loops, work two single crochet. One and two. Insert into the next stitch going under the top two loops, work two single crochet. One and two. So we have one stitch remaining of round two, so insert under the top two loops and work two single crochet. One and two. So round two is finished. Now when you're crocheting, this is going to want to turn in like a bowl. You need to make sure that you're pushing out on it and just take your fingers and push it towards you. You want the right side facing when you're working. So round two is finished and you should have a total of eight single crochet from your stitch marker around. So now we're going to begin round three and round three we're just going to work one single crochet in each of the eight stitches around. So let's begin. Insert into that first stitch where you have your stitch marker. Work a single crochet. That's one. Single crochet into the next stitch. That's two single crochet into the next stitch that's three single crochet into the next stitch that's four single crochet into the next stitch that's five single crochet into the next stitch that's six insert into the next stitch work a single crochet that's seven and then insert into the last stitch work a single crochet and that's eight. Now again it wants to turn into a bowl. You need to take your fingers and push that right through with your fingers towards you. And our nose is partly finished. The crocheting part is done. So now we're going to fasten off but when you fasten off make sure you leave a longer length at least 10 to 12 inches because we're going to weave through the whole top of the nose and then we need to sew it on. So I'm just going to fasten off and leave about a 10 to 12 inch length and again you can use whichever method you prefer to fasten off. I usually chain two, pull my yarn up and out, grab pinch and pull down and then you can go ahead and take that stitch marker out of your nose. So now since your nose is finished go ahead and make eight more noses so you have a total of nine and when you get those noses made then I'll be back and we'll start attaching our pieces to our Santa applique. So now since we have all of our Santa appliques made, you should have a total of nine, and you should have them all marked which side is the right side by a piece of yarn or a stitch marker. So I have my right side facing, and now we're going to attach our pieces and we're going to layer them. We're going to sew our mouth on, then our mustache, and then put the nose on top of the mustache. So I have my mouth and I already attached my yarn needle to that end of yarn where we fastened off. And I'm just going to bring my mouth up right here and you want to go right in the center of Santa between the face and the white, right about there. You want to make sure it's centered and I use my yarn needle. I just hold my yarn needle right up against the end of Santa and I know it's not centered yet so I'm going to move it over because it should be about one needle length across. And then I just lay it over here and then that makes it center. So with the Santa applique I'm not going to worry whether my yarn shows on the back. I'm going to just sew right down through my Santa. I'm going to take my yarn needle underneath and pull it through and then I'm just going to keep coming up through the stitches. 
Now the mouth is pretty small, so I just use my finger and I just keep it on there. And I just take my yarn needle up and down through the fabric of my Santa applique and then I just sew it on there. And you can just use your fingers and keep adjusting it as you're sewing. Now when we attach the Santa to the top of the blanket, I'm going to be sewing my pieces on in a completely different manner because I don't want my thread to show on the back when I sew it onto the afghan. But with this piece, it really doesn't matter because of it being on top of the other piece. So then I'm just going to come across the top and sew this. And then after you get your last stitch made and your mouth is sewn on, what I like to do is I'll just pull my yarn needle up right through the corner, take it back down, and then I'll bring it back up. And then what I do is I'll take it back down one more time, but I have my finger, I keep a loop. So I'll put my finger in there and keep a loop and then I push it back down. And then before I pull it all the way through, I put my needle through the loop and form a knot. And then I'll just weave my ends in through the back of Santa. and then I'll weave it back through one more time just to secure it and then I'm just going to fasten off my yarn. Now again it doesn't matter what it looks like on the back because you're going to be sewing this on top of the other piece so you don't have to be as careful with your stitches and again when we sew this onto the background block we're going to sew it a completely different way so you don't see any stitches on the back. So now since my mouth is sewed on, I'm going to go ahead and take this piece of yarn out because I know this is the top side of my Santa. So now what you want to do is you're going to take your mustache and because we fastened off over here, I always take and thread my yarn and then I just pull my yarn needle from the bottom up and bring this over right to that center edge of the mustache, just like that over to the center. And then what you want to do is you're going to place your mustache right on top of the mouth and you want to kind of cover up the top of the mouth so you don't see any of those edges. And then you can either sew your mustache straight across, but I like to angle my mustache so it's pointing down a little bit. And then what I do is I just put one finger on this side and one finger over here and then I check my edges. I always use my yarn needle. It's the easiest and fastest way. I just use my fingernail and I put my needle up against the end of the mustache, move my finger up to where it is, keep your finger there, and then go over to the other side and make sure it matches so everything is centered. And then you're just going to sew right through the center of your mustache up to the center and then back down through. So I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing my mustache on. So again, you don't have to be real careful because it's going to be on top of the other block. And that's just all there is to sewing your mustache onto your Santa and you can follow the center lines of that mustache. And then as you go, just make sure that the left side is angled at about the same angle as the right side. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue sewing my mustache. And again, I'm sewing right through the center line. So go ahead and sew your mustache on and I'll be back and show you how to attach the nose. 
So now I have my mustache attached and when you turn it over you'll notice you can't see it as much because you're sewing white on white. So now it's time to attach the nose. So with our nose the first thing we're going to do is we're going to thread your yarn needle onto your leftover sewing length of yarn and then we're going to weave our needle in and out through each one of those stitches on top of the nose. So you're just going to put it in and out until you get over to that first stitch. And now since we're over to the first stitch, I'm just going to pull. So if you have an end of yarn like I do, I already pushed it down into the center of the nose, then you're just going to pull tight. And you're going to close that nose up. And then what I do is I do a crisscross stitch. I take my yarn needle, I go all the way over to the other side, and then bring it back. And all we're doing is securing that opening closed to make sure it stays closed. And then I just come through one more time. And then I push down and then I go from side to side on the other side. So then what you want to do is just take your nose and go back up to the top. You'll see that little center hole where you started round one. And you just want to push that flat. Just flatten that nose down just so it gets rounded. And then we're just going to stick it right on the center of his mustache. So just put it right on the center part right here. And then you're just going to sew that in place. And I like to keep my finger right there to help hold it where I want it to be. Pull it tight and then look to make sure it's where you want it to be and then finish sewing it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my nose and then we'll come back and we'll attach the eyes. So now I have his little nose on his face. Now when I made the Christmas tree skirt I put little cheeks under his mustache but because this was downsized so much I didn't think there was enough room for the cheeks so I left them off of this one. So now I'm going to attach the eyes and I'm using safety eyes. These are the wiggly eyes that I bought at Hobby Lobby. They're the solid black eyes. They're 0.39 inches and 10 millimeters and it comes in a 20 piece pack for $1.99. Now why I use these eyes is because it has those security backs to where if you have little little children it helps so they can't pull those eyes off and put them in their mouth. So if you have really small children it's nice to use these. Now they do have a longer back and you're going to have to trim some of this off once you attach those eyes. But make sure you don't use your good scissors, maybe some wire cutters or something to cut those backs off. Now you can put your eyes close together you can make them farther apart but what I did is I tried to center them and I went right up to the center of each top of his mustache right here and over here and I just tried to place them where I thought that they would be pretty well even with his face. So then I took a look and I thought okay that looks pretty good so then you just poke your eyes through let me get this one through, make sure it's in the same row. You can just follow it down. And once you have your eyes where you want them to be, make sure that you check it before you put the backs on. Really look and see, is that where I want my eyes? So I noticed my eyes weren't quite the same distance from the edge, so I'm just going to try again and then I'm going to just kind of size it up with my yarn needle. This is just how I do it. It's just an easy way. So that looks pretty good. Now they look like they're the same distance from the end. 
I have them both in the same row so they're even so make sure you're not down a row make sure you're following that across and now I'm going to put the backs on so I'm just going to put my finger here hold them in place flip it over and then you just want to put the backs on your eyes and just push down and secure that so you don't want these sticking out make sure you cut them off and make them even and it, they are really hard to cut so just get them cut maybe use wire cutters or something that's a little bit stronger and cut them even with the ends so that is how you do the Santa now for the pom-pom I sew that on after I attach Santa to the background block because of wanting to make sure this is secure and sewing around that top part. So the pom-pom will come on after we sew it to the background block. So our Santa applique is finished and now it's time to attach our Santa to the background block. Now before you sew all your Santa appliques onto your block, you have to remember that your block has three double crochet at the bottom and two double crochet at the top when you work that last round. So it's very important to pay close attention that when you join your Santa, the top of the Santa will be at the top where you have the two stitches and the bottom of the Santa should be at the bottom where you have the three stitches. Now if you accidentally sew this on wrong, then what's going to happen is you're going to have two stitches on this side, three on this, and then it's not going to match up with the three, two, three, two. And that the stitches are the same amount of stitches. It's just not going to look right because you're going to have more stitches on one side than the other. You want to make sure it's three on one side, three on the other, two, two, three, three. So make sure the top of the Santa is at the top where you have two stitches. The bottom of the Santa is facing down the bottom where you have the three double crochet stitches. That way when you join your blocks together, everything's going to match. So I cut off the back of my eyes and I cut them even with the back. So it just makes it so you don't have those pointy ends with that longer length sticking and poking through. So now it's time to attach our Santa to the background block. So what I like to do is I like to center him on the block. And what I do is I just kind of like make sure there's the same distance on the bottom, about two or four rows down here, and then about two to four rows up at the top. And then again, I use my yarn needle. It's just an easy way because I already have it in my hand. And I just put the end of the yarn needle against my block and I see where it lays on the Santa about right here. If you use the same spot between the blush color of the face and the white of the beard, it gives you a nice starting point. So it's about, I'd say a quarter of an inch over and then when I come over here and lay it down, it's about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to pull it this way just a little bit. And then when I feel it's right in the best position, then I'm going to take a longer length. And this is about 30 to 36 inch length of a contrasting color. And I'm going to base my Santa onto the block. And the reason I do this is because it really holds him securely on the block and it won't maneuver and get distorted. So when you're sewing it on, the last thing you want to do is have to rip out your stitches because your Santa moved to one side or the other. So this is where I want my Santa to be. It looks like he's about right in the right position. So all I'm going to do is take my yarn needle and I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to come right down the center of my Santa. And I'm going to leave a length up here because when I'm all done sewing my Santa onto the block, then you can just pull these big stitches right out and get rid of this length of yarn. So then again, I am using really big stitches and you want to go through both thicknesses. And this is just my method of how I do it. And as I do it, I'm pressing down, making sure he's staying where I want him to be. And if you have a different method for attaching your appliques, 
then by all means use whichever method you prefer. Now I'm just going to make a big stitch here and go right underneath that nose and mouth and come out right underneath his mouth. I don't want to be poking through my extra pieces here so I go right under them and then I come down to the bottom. Once I'm down at the bottom of the Santa, I'm just going to put a small stitch here just to hold him in place down here. And now I'm going to go right up the side of Santa and back down the other side just to make sure he's nice and secure of where I want my Santa to be. And again, after we sew the Santa onto the background block, you can see how easy you can just pull these big stitches right out. So just go up around Santa. And then I'm always going like this, making sure he's flat and not getting distorted as I'm basing him onto the background block. And then once I'm at the top, then I'm just going to base down around the other side. And this truly is helpful when you're sewing him together. And then when I get down here to the bottom, I'm just going to come right up at the bottom. And because my yarn is pretty long, I'm just going to cut it just so it's shorter. So now our Santa is based onto the background block and he's not going anywhere. This is just a nice way to keep him in place while you're sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my red and I'm going to sew this red section first. So let me grab my red and you want to pull a long enough length off of your red that you can go down the side of the hat and then we're going to go across the hat and back up the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you started with how to sew your Santa on and then what you will do is continue using that method to completely sew around the outside edge of Santa to attach him and you'll be changing colors and using the color on the outside edge of the hat. So let's get started on the red. I'm going to zoom up so you can see what I'm doing. And this method, you're not going to see your stitches on the back side. Your stitches are going to be on the top. And what we're doing is we're working in these top stitches right here. You're only going to be grabbing the top stitch. You're not going underneath the work. You just want to go under these top loops of these stitches that's showing. So, okay, take your finger, make sure that's laying flat. And what you want to do is lift up the red portion of the hat and you're going to come over about three stitches. So I'm just going to go under two stitches and then I'm going to pull my yarn needle through and then I'm going to tie a knot. Now I always tie a double knot. And then I'm just going to take this little piece of yarn and I'm just going to stuff it right under his hat. Just put it right in there wherever you can underneath. Then you're going to take your yarn needle and pull it right up through the top edge of that hat. And now we're going to go ahead and begin sewing on. So what you want to do is when you're sewing, do not come over in any of these stitches here. You want to pick up your work. First, you want to kind of put your finger on there, see where the stitches are right here. And you want to go over a stitch. You want to come over here underneath and not beside. You want to come over so it's about one stitch underneath your work and then you're just going to come up through the edge of that hat. And that way you're not going to see your red come over into these stitches. Because if you come over too far you're going to end up seeing that yarn in the green. So again you want to make sure you look at your work just press down Here's a stitch, so you want to make sure you're going into the stitch underneath the red. So come back down underneath your work, come underneath the red, 
and go into this stitch over here and you're only grabbing the top loop. You're not going through the whole piece of fabric and then just bring it up through the edge of that hat and then just pull through and you just tighten it as you go. So I'm just going to show you a couple more times. Again, press down. If it's sticking up, just press down. Okay, here's our stitches. So you want to lift up and you want to go over one stitch underneath the red. So pick up your work. I'm going down here and I'm going to pick up the stitch underneath the red. And I'm only going into the top loop and then I'm coming up through the edge of the hat. And then you just want to pull tight. And when you turn it over, you're not going to see any of the red. Now these base stitches we're going to pull out, but this way your stitches are staying on the top layer of the work and it's not going to show through. So let's do it a couple more times. Look at your work. So here's the green stitch. You want to come over one more stitch so you don't see your red. Pick up the red and then come over to that next stitch. Just pick up one of the top loops or two if there's two there. Then bring your needle up through the edge of the hat and then pull your yarn. Again, you're going to move down to the next stitch of the side of the hat look on your work to see where that stitch is. Here's a stitch, but we want to go over one more. Pick up the red and then go into the next stitch. Pick up the top loop and come up through the edge of the hat. And again, when you turn your work over, you're not going to see those stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and sew down to the bottom corner and then I'll show you how I go across the hat. So I just sewed down the length of Santa's hat to the bottom edge of the red. And again, when you turn it over, you're not going to see those stitches. So what I like to do is when I get to the corner is I like to knot. So when I do my last stitch, I'm going to come up under. I'm going to go under that stitch and then back up through the edge of that corner. And before I pull it all the way through, I have a loop and I just take my needle through that loop and just create a knot and it just helps secure that corner. And now because I don't want to keep fastening off and joining every time there's a space to do in the color, I just weave my yarn across to the center of the Santa hat. So just take your yarn needle and go in and out underneath the top of those stitches. And because it's the same color, it really blends in well and you really don't see it. Now once I'm over to about the center point of Santa's hat, I like to take my yarn needle down and I like to try to grab a top of a stitch of that background block. Now sometimes it's hard, you really have to play around with your yarn needle to grab that stitch. And I'm just going to, right here you can see I'm grabbing just the top of that stitch. So when you look, I'm just trying to get my needle underneath just the top of that stitch and then I'm going to lower my needle back down underneath the stitches and weave through the rest of Santa's hat. And it just helps secure Santa's hat right in the center and it just helps clip that there. So when you're washing it and using this afghan and displaying it, it just makes it so there's a little more in between these larger sections that's open that just helps keep that attached. And then I'm just coming over to the edge. And then again, when I get to the edge, now I spin my block around as I'm sewing. And then when I get to the edge, I'm going to make another knot. So I'm just going to look to see where my stitches are. Here's the outside stitch. So you want to make sure you go over underneath the red portion and grab the next stitch underneath. So I'm just going to grab that stitch. Actually, I'm going to grab two loops here and I'm going to come back up through the edge of that hat. And before you pull it all the way through, make a loop 
and then just bring your yarn needle through the loop and it just helps keep that attached more securely. And then I'm just going to sew back up to this edge and then I'm going to knot. So I'm going to go ahead and sew up to the end of the red and I'll be back and I'll show you how to finish the Santa applique. So I'm over at the bottom edge of my hat, so I'm going to pick that up and go over one stitch underneath, back up through, and again you want to leave a loop, take your yarn needle through the loop, and then just knot that, and then I take my yarn needle and I weave it in through those stitches of the red. Make sure you always weave in through the same color of stitches as the yarn you're using. And then I'm coming back. And that's how I weave in my ends. And then I just clip my yarn. So now to finish sewing your Santa on, let me zoom out a little bit. You're going to use the same stitch technique and you're going to match the colors. So next, how I do it is I attach my white up here to this section underneath. You're going to attach it the same way as you did the red and then you're going to sew it on to this point. And then instead of starting and stopping that white, what I do is I lift up this edge and I weave my white in and out through the top loop only on the back. And I just run that white right through these stitches on the facial part and then I bring it over to this point here. Now this will stay unsewed and then you're just going to bring your white underneath and then start here. You're going to sew around the bottom edge around that rounded part of the beard and then when you get to this point you're just going to weave your white up through the back of the section here of the face you're going to bring it out here and then sew your corner here, make that knot, and then weave your stitches in across the white stitches and then back through the stitches of the next row. And then all you have to do is repeat for the face. Now for the face, I start here, I sew down, I sew across, and then I do kind of pull this up and I just weave my yarn in and out. I try to tack it here and then I just go underneath Santa and come out on the other side of the nose, weave it across and do the same thing up the side. There's no need to start stopping and starting that yarn. Just weave it through those matching stitches and then up the other side and then fasten off. And then all you have to do is sew this little portion here of the white section at the top of the hat. So I'm going to go ahead and continue sewing my Santa applique to the block. And when I'm done, I'll be back and we'll continue. So now I have my Santa applique all sewn onto my background block. So now what you can do is I'm just going to clip this top one, just make it a little bit shorter. And then I can just take my yarn needle and I can pull up and you can just pull these stitches right out of your Santa applique. And then when it gets too long, I just clip it again and I just keep pulling those stitches out and then you can just grab it and pull it out. So that is the front of our block and when you turn it over you're going to notice you see no stitches on the back so your back stays a nice solid color. So now the only thing left we have to do is attach our pom-pom. Now for my Santa blocks, I bought the pre-made pom-poms at Hobby Lobby. This is what they look like. And this is a one and a half inch pom-pom. So it's 1.5 inches, 3.81 centimeters. It comes in a 30 piece package and it's $2.49. So it's item number 160010. If you're on Hobby Lobby's website and you want to buy those pre-made pom-poms or if you know how to make the yarn pom-poms, they look just as nice. 
So I'm just using white thread and a sewing needle, and I'm just going to take my pom-pom. Now, when sewing these pom-poms on, you really have to be careful because there's not very much to sew. You have to get right into the center of this pom-pom where you can feel that little bit of um, a center. So make sure that your needle is going through that center because if you go through this outside edge, it's not going to hold. Really make sure you secure it through the center. So what I do is I just take my sewing needle right through the center stitches right here of this top of this hat. And that's why I made it white, just so it kind of blended in with the white pom-pom. And then I just make sure I knot that by going through where I tied it. And I'm using a double strand of yarn. And then I like to leave a longer length because after I sew my pom-pom on, then I take it and I tie a double knot with what's left over of my yarn to that beginning string. So I let that off to the side. So then you just want to center your pom-pom right onto that section, and then you're going to sew right through the center and make sure it's nice and secure and make sure it's really pushed down and you get through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew my pom-pom on and then I'll be back. So once I have my pom-pom where I think it's nice and secured and attached, so then I just take my starting length that I had and my ending yarn that's left over from sewing and I just tie a double knot. And you can even tie a third knot if you want to really make sure it's secure. And then what I do is I bend my pom-pom back and then I just trim underneath here. And that is how you do your Santa applique block. So now all you have to do is go ahead and finish your other eight blocks, or if you're making the afghan larger, then just go ahead and finish all your blocks in the same manner. And now I'm going to grab my white and I'm gonna show you how to join your blocks together. So now it's time to start joining our blocks together. So you want to have two of your blocks and you want them right side facing where you can see the Santas. So we're going to start and we're going to join these together to form rows. We're going to be one block long by three blocks across. And then we're going to do a total of three rows. So go ahead and take your two blocks. You want them right side facing and then you want to take the block on the right and you you just want to flip it upside down on top of the block on the left so you're going to have the right sides facing each other and then the wrong side will be up now to join the blocks we're going to be working down the length and we're going to be using white to match this color so I already have my white on my hook, and what you want to do is, what I like to do is I'll just take this and put my hook right into that bottom right hand corner, and then I just swing my block around so I can work across the long length of my block. And I'm just going to pull my hook out, and then what we're going to do is we're going to be matching stitches from the top block into the same stitch in the block below. So what we're going to do is we're going to start down here in the corner chain two space in that first chain. Now I already attached my yarn to my hook and now I'm going to join my white. I'm going to go right into that first chain and then I'm going to match it up to the first chain of the corner down here in this corner chain two. And then I'm just going to slip stitch through those two chains and through the loop on my hook and that just creates a secure joining of my yarn. I'm going to chain one. So now I'm just going to insert my hook back into that same first chain and I'm going through both blocks and we're going to work a single crochet. Now you can slip stitch, you can hand sew this, or you can just single crochet like I do. I'm going into the next chain I'm going to match it to the chain below in that corner chain two, work a single crochet. So now we're going to work across the block and we're going to match stitches. Now when I single crochet across my block, I go into the top loop or the loop facing you, that very top loop of the top block, 
and then I'm going to match it to the first stitch in the block below, but you're going into the back loop. So this is the front loop you want to go into the back loop of the stitch below. Work a single crochet. So now we're going to do the same method across. Now this is where I fastened off, so this is really tight. You want to go into the top front loop and then you want to match it to the stitch below and then go into the back loop. And this helps open up the seam so it just has a really pretty look to it. And I'll show you that after we do a few more stitches. Insert into the next stitch and you're going right into that top front loop that's facing you and then you're going to match it to the stitch below and go into the back loop. Work a single crochet. Again, go into that top front loop that's facing you. Find the matching stitch below and then you're going to insert into the back loop of that stitch. Work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch in that top front loop match it to the back loop of the same stitch in the block below, work a single crochet. Let's do it one more time. You're going to insert into the front loop of the next stitch. You're going to match it to the matching stitch below, into the back loop of that stitch, work a single crochet. And that's all there is to joining your blocks. So go ahead and single crochet across each stitch working in the front loop of the top block of that stitch and the back loop of the block below in the matching stitch. Work that across to your corner chain two and I'll meet you there. So I just single crocheted across to my corner chain two space. So I'm now I'm at the next corner. So we're just going to go into that very first chain match it to the very first chain below and single crochet. Insert into the second chain of that corner chain two and then match it to the chain two space of the block below. Work a single crochet. I'm just going to fasten off and it just creates a beautiful edge on your blocks. And I just noticed I forgot to sew my pom-pom onto this Santa. So I'm going to have to go back and sew my pom-pom on. So sorry about that. So this is what happens sometimes when you're working on a project and videotaping. Sometimes you get ahead of yourself. So let's grab our next block. You're going to take your next block. So let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit more. These blocks are pretty large. So we have two put together already. So just grab your next block. You're going to have it right side facing and you're just going to do what we did before. You're going to go ahead and take this block, turn it right sides together and yes, you're going to see my eyes poking through. So Creative Grandma has a confession. I have to go back and I have to unseam my Santa and put the eyes on the inside. Because at first I was going to embroider the eyes. And I sewed all my Santas onto my blocks except the last block. And then I just didn't like the way the embroidered eyes looked. So I went back and I just poked them through both layers of fabric and it's just too thick to do that. It just is really thick and these can pop back off. So this I have to correct so please ignore that. You want to make sure that your eyes are attached on the front of that applique and then this is how nice it looks. You will not have this and you won't have to go back and fix that. So that is something I have to go back and fix. So okay, we have our two blocks attached. You take your third block again, right sides facing. So you're just flipping this block over on the two you have made. Put your hook down in the corner, swing your blocks around, 
And now all you have to do is just repeat what I just showed you. You're going to start in that very first chain of the corner. You're going to match those stitches across and you're going to single crochet this together. So I'm going to go ahead and single crochet across my block and attach this third block and that will complete our first row. So I just got done attaching the third block. So this is what our first row is gonna look like. You wanna attach three blocks together to form a row. So now all you have to do is repeat this process until you have two more rows for a total of three rows. So go ahead and join your block so you have a total of three rows of one block down by three blocks across and I'll come back and I'll show you how to join the rows together. So now since we have all of our rows put together you should have a total of three rows one block long by three blocks square. Now if you're making your afghan larger then you're still going to use the same process to put your rows together. So what you're going to do is take your first two rows and I'm starting from the bottom and I'm working my way up. This is the easiest way to do it. So I have my bottom row and again we're going to do this and attach three rows of blocks. So this is the bottom row so you want it right side facing and then you're going to take the next row, put it right above the bottom row. And this is right side facing. And now you're going to take the top row and you're going to flip it down over the bottom row. So I'm just going to take this top row and I'm just going to flip it and you're going to turn it so it's over the bottom row. So the right sides are facing and Santa, the bottom of Santa's face is going to be facing the top of the Santa block. And then after we attach it, it'll be right side up. Now remember, your afghan will not have these eyes. I worked ahead, I changed my mind at the last minute of what I wanted to do with the eyes, so your block should all be nice and flat and look like this. I'm going to have to go back and change this. So okay, again, you have your two rows. You're going to put them right side facing, take the top row, and fold it down over the bottom row so the right sides are together and the wrong side is facing. And now we're going up to the top right hand corner right in this corner chain two space and start working across the top of the two blocks to join the rows together. So let me go ahead and zoom up. Again you're going to start up in this top right hand corner and the method I'm going to use is the same method we use to join the blocks together and we're going to use that method across until we get to this joining seam. You're going to have a space on this side and a space on this side. Once you get over to that joining seam you're going to stop and then I'll show you how to work over that joining seam. So I already have my yarn attached to my hook and I just used a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn. So we're going to start up in the top right hand corner just like we did when we joined our blocks. You're going to insert into that first chain, match it to the first chain below. You're going to slip stitch to join your yarn. Yarn over the hook, pull it through those chains and pull it through the loop on your hook and this just secures your yarn. You're going to chain one, insert back into that same chain, work a single crochet. And again, we're just matching stitches across to the joining seam, working through both thicknesses, both rows. Insert into that next chain, match it to the second chain in the corner chain two space in the row below, work a single crochet. Now we're going to start working in the stitches. You're going to go into the front loop, the loop that's facing you in the top row, and you're going to go into the back loop of the matching stitch below. Work a single crochet. Again, you're going to go into the front loop of the next stitch of the top row, match it to the stitch below the matching stitch and go into the back loop. Again, same method you use for joining your blocks. 
So I'll show you a couple more times. You're going to insert into the front loop of the next stitch, which is the first stitch of that two double crochet group. Look below and you're going into the first stitch of that two double crochet group below and you're going into the back loop of that matching stitch. Work a single crochet. Insert into the front loop of the next stitch on the top block. Match it to the stitch below. Insert into the back loop work a single crochet. Again, you're going to go into the front loop of the next stitch, the one that's facing you, match it to the stitch below, and go into the back loop, work a single crochet. Insert into the front loop of the next stitch, match it to the stitch below, go into the back loop, work a single crochet. So go ahead and continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across to the joining seam, working in through the top loop of this top block and into the back loop of the bottom block, matching those stitches. So go ahead and work across to the joining seam and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my first joining seam and you should have ended with a single crochet into that last half double crochet of that corner and then you're going to see a space. You're going to see your joining seam and then another space. So right beside this joining seam, it sticks up a little bit, it has a ridge, you're going to see a loop above these spaces. So we're going to be crocheting on the right hand side of the joining stitch and onto the left hand side of that joining seam. Now when I work under this top loop, I like to grab another loop below. So I just stick my hook in here. And if you look real close, you're going to go down underneath that second strand of yarn and grab two loops. It just really helps secure that. So then you're going to match it to the loops on the right hand side of that joining seam on the row below on that work and you're going to go under the top two loops. Here's a loop and here's a loop. Make sure you're going under both of those strands of yarn. Work your single crochet. And we're also going to do that on the left side. So you're only going to see one strand of yarn so just come down here and there's a total of three strands. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to stick my finger. Here's one, there's one stuck down here, and then here's one. You're just going in between the second and third loop. So you'll have one loop underneath, two loops on top, and then you're going to do the same thing and match it below. So you're just going under the top two loops. You'll see one, two, three, insert between the second and third loop, work a single crochet. And then you're just going to start matching your stitches again across to the next joining seam. So let me get you started. Insert into the next stitch in the front top loop, match it to that first stitch below, go into the back loop, work a single crochet. Insert into the front loop, that top loop of the next stitch, match it to the stitch below and you're going into the back loop, work a single crochet. And again, you're matching stitches. Insert into the top front loop of the next stitch, match it to the next stitch and go into the back loop, work a single crochet. So go ahead and continue working your single crochets across to the next joining seam and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next joining seam. I just worked one single crochet in each stitch across matching those stitches through both thicknesses. And again when you get to that joining seam we're going to go into the space right on the right hand side and look closely. You have one, two, three strands of yarn insert between the second and third strand. So then you're going to match it to the right hand side of the joining seam below and again you want to go between the second and third strand of yarn. Work your single crochet. You're going to skip that ridge of the joining seam. You're going to go over to the left hand side of the joining seam. And again, there is three strands of yarn here. You just have to use your hook. One, two, three, insert between the second and third loop. And do the same on the left hand side. You're going to skip the joining seam and the 
and then go between the second and third strand of yarn, work a single crochet. So then you're going to start all over again. You're going to go into the top loop of the first stitch. You're going to match it to the first stitch below, go into the back loop, work a single crochet. Insert into the top loop of the next stitch of the top row, match it to the stitch below and go into the back loop. Work your single crochet. So go ahead and continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across until you get to your corner chain two space and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the ending corner chain two space and now we're just going to work one single crochet in each one of those chains in the corner and match it to the stitch below work a single crochet single crochet into that next chain, match it to the second chain in the row below, work a single crochet. Now I'm just going to fasten off, So this is what our afghan looks like so far. We just did the bottom row and the middle row and now all we have to do is attach the top row. So I'm just going to pull this down and you're just going to repeat the same process. You're going to take your final row, your top row, you're going to lay it on top of this middle row and again you want your right sides facing and then you're just going to flip the top row over onto the middle row. So then when you look at your work you're going to have the bottom of his beard at the top of the hat on the row below. You're going to go up here to your top right hand corner and you're going to start and attach your rows together just as I showed you. So go ahead and continue and repeat what I just showed you of how to attach your rows. I'm going to go ahead and attach my final row and I'll be back and I'll show you what the afghan looks like. I'm back. I just attached my last row so I have the top center and bottom row attached. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I'm going to go ahead and finish working on the tutorial. I'm going to videotape crocheting the border on and then I'll be back with the final tutorial for how to put your border on your Santa afghan. I hope you're enjoying these tutorials on how to make this adorable Christmas afghan. So until next time, happy crocheting everyone.